Okay, so now I'm going to deal with the histology of the cardiovascular system. Let's start with the basic structure of the circulatory system. The circulatory system basically is a tube, like blood vessels, even the heart is a tube that is folded on itself during embryonic development. So this tube has multiple layers and each one of them has a function. So these three, actually there are three layers. We call them tunics, like coats. So there's the tunica intima, there's the tunica media, and the tunica adventitia. The tunica intima, also called the tunica interna, because it is the inner layer. Here is the inner layer here. And it is formed of a single layer of flattened epithelial cells. These epithelial cells, they are called endothelial cells because they um, originate from the endoderm. Some other epithelial cells originate from the mesoderm, so they are called mesothelial cells and other epithelium is derived from the ectoderm but these are derived from endoderm so they are called endothelial cells and they lie on a basement membrane as well as subendothelial connective tissue this is a connective tissue here lying just beneath the endothelial cells so all these uh, constitute what we call the tunica intima and then we have the tunica media which is as the name indicates the intermediate layer and this is predominantly made of muscle fibers smooth muscle uh, fibers and some types of arteries there is a predominance of elastic fibers but in most of the other arteries and even in the veins there are uh, smooth muscle uh, fibers with collagen and elastic fibers are present but there's a small amount of elastic fibers and um, in the heart the middle layer of the heart is the myocardium and so it's also uh, formed of muscle fibers but they are not smooth muscle fibers they are cardiac muscle fibers then the tunica adventitia which is the outer layer tunica externa and is uh, formed of uh, connective tissue and uh, in uh, certain uh, arteries especially larger arteries um, there are small arteries as well supplying the wall so these are arteries of the arteries or vessels of the blood vessels and they have a special name we call them the vasa vasorum and uh, the reason is that the blood vessels are uh, thick and uh, so the the cells that are present in the wall cannot rely on oxygen that is present in the blood to reach them and that's why uh, they are supplemented by blood vessels in the wall and these blood vessels this vasa vasorum in the heart is um, represented as uh, coronary circulation coronary arteries supplying the wall of the heart so the same idea now let's start with the first histology slide here this is a, a slide of a muscular or distributing artery and you can see that this this is a special stain that stains elastic fibers so you don't see cells you don't see nuclei uh, this will be the tunica intima which is lined by a simple squamous epithelium lying on a subendothelial connective tissue and you can see that there is a layer of elastic fibers called internal elastic lamina this internal elastic lamina some textbook consider it as part of the tunica intima some textbooks consider it as part of the tunica media but it doesn't matter it is located at the border between tunica intima and the uh, tunica uh, media and it contains and is formed of elastic fibers mainly so that's why it is prominent in this stain then we have the tunica media which is mainly formed of smooth muscle fibers because this is a muscular artery but still we can see some evidence of elastic fibers and then there's the external elastic lamina another layer of elastic fibers that uh, separate tunica media from the tunica adventitia which is formed of connective tissue this is an another stain of an artery look at how the artery is uniformly shaped circular shape and you can see the three layers you can see the uh, tunica intima the cells the epithelial cells are not clearly seen you can see some nuclei here um, but not clearly seen because of um, it looks crinkled because of the presence of the internal elastic uh, lamina the internal elastic lamina is so obvious here and then you have multiple layers of smooth muscle fibers look at the nuclei 
only small amount of elastic tissue, but there are collagen fibers. And then you find another layer or another collection of elastic fibers here, which is the external elastic lamina separating the tunica media from the tunica adventitia, where connective tissue is formed. You can see a nerve accompanying the blood vessel. Here is another nerve. So these are distributing arteries uh, because they have a predominance of smooth muscle in their wall. They, that's why they are called muscular arteries. But why do we call them distributing arteries? Because these smooth muscle fibers, they will control the caliber of the artery and therefore they will uh, um, help in distributing the blood to uh, um, organs depending on the situation. So for example, let's say in situations of where there's sympathetic overstimulation like uh, fight or flight, these smooth muscle fibers and the blood vessels of the heart and the blood vessels of skeletal muscles are going to relax so that there will be more blood coming to the heart, more blood coming to the skeletal muscles. But at the same time, the smooth muscle fibers and the wall of the blood vessels supplying the gut uh, will uh, contract and uh, so that the blood will be diverted from the gut to go to more needed organs, the heart, the skeletal muscles at, at this time. Uh, that's why they are called distributing arteries because they control the distribution of the blood and they are muscular because this control over distribution is due to the fact that they have thick tunica media made of multiple layers of um, smooth muscle fiber. This is another type of artery which is called elastic or conducting artery. These are the large arteries that are connected to the heart like for example this section is from the aorta and again it is stained with a special stain that shows the elastic fibers only and because these are big arteries you cannot see the entire artery in one section so this is a section in part of the artery and this is the luminal side and uh, here is the where the endothelial cells are located and they lie on a subendothelial connective tissue of the tunica intima and then you can see that the tunica media is all formed of multiple laminae of elastic fibers so you cannot distinguish an internal elastic lamina and external elastic lamina. They are all elastic lamina throughout the whole thickness of the tunica media. And then there is the tunica uh, adventitia. So that's why these are called uh, elastic arteries because they have um, multiple layers, multiple lamina of elastic uh, fibers. And at the same time, they are conducting arteries because they conduct the blood from the heart. And in a moment, I will uh, give more details about the use of these multiple elastic fibers in the wall of these arteries. Then we have the other vessel here are the arterioles. These are the small arteries. They are less than 0.5 millimeter in diameter. They have the same structure of the artery, tunica intima and endothelial cells, uh, tunica media with the smooth muscle fibers. But the smooth muscle fibers are, that are present in the wall of the arteriole um, they are only limited to one to five layers of smooth muscle fibers because the arteriole is very small. So um, up to five smooth muscle fibers, uh, layers of smooth muscle fibers are present in this wall. In some arterioles, there is an internal elastic lamina, but there is no way that there is an external elastic lamina. And there is a layer of adventitia. And you can see this arteriole is accompanied by a vein, a small vein, which is called a venule. And you can from here recognize that the venule has a very thin wall in comparison to the size of the lumen. And that's why it is easily compressed. So it is not like uniformly rounded like in the arteriole because the arteriole has a thicker wall than the uh, venule. And in both of them, you can see that the lumen has uh, red blood cells. So they are definitely, they are blood vessels. And this is a vascular bundle, which is also accompanied by a nerve and it is surrounded here by collagen fibers. This is a dense irregular connective tissue. So you can see collagen fibers in different orientation. Here is a longitudinal. This is an oblique uh, orientation. And the whole is called a neurovascular bundle because it's a nerve and blood vessels, artery, arteriole and venule. 
and the, the nerve uh, you can see that uh, it has doesn't have a lumen that's why here I am saying that this is a nerve and the cells here the nuclei of the cells make sure that these are not of neurons because a nerve what's a nerve it's a bundle of axons so the neuron the cell body is not present in the nerve it's present in somewhere else either in a ganglion or it's present in the gray matter of the brain or in the spinal cord but why do we see cell uh, nuclei here these are the cells the schwann cells that provide the myelin sheath of the peripheral nervous system this is another slide showing you the muscular artery but at the same time it is showing a vein so if you look at the vein you will see that the vein has a very thin wall in comparison to the size of its lumen compressed because of it has a thin wall so it is easily uh, compressed and uh, not only this you will find that the vein also has the same features so the principle is the same there is a tunica intima with endothelial cells they don't look like crinkled because there is no internal elastic lamina and there is a tunica media here but the tunica media is very thin in comparison to the tunica adventitia so the, the wall of the vein in general is thin because the blood in the vein is under low pressure and the thickest tunic in the vein is not the tunica media like in the artery but it is the tunica adventitia you can see here again thin tunica media in comparison to the tunica adventitia and again you can see a nerve another small artery here not an arteriole it's an artery and another vein in comparison to the artery you see that uh, it is uh, has a thin very thin wall in comparison to the size of its lumen so this is how to um, in summary to differentiate between an artery and vein the shape is less deformed than the artery as you compare it with the vein which is flattened because it has a thin wall it doesn't need a thick wall because the blood in the vein is under low pressure and the intima is crinkled because of the presence of an internal elastic lamina here the intima is smooth because there is uh, no internal elastic lamina also sometimes in sections of the veins you uh, you will find the presence of valves very thin a layer of valves uh, like bicuspid valves if this is a section in the vein then the valves they open in the direction of the flow of blood and so they will allow unidirectional flow of blood toward the heart and they will prevent the blood from uh, returning uh, back away from the heart because if the blood tries to return these cusps will come together and will uh, close this is an important mechanism for venous return in the in the heart so when the vein uh, because they have thin wall they are easily squeezed and when they are squeezed for example by muscle contraction like in the peripheral uh, in the in the limbs the muscles are play an important role in uh, the uh, venous return of the blood they squeeze the art the veins and they allow unidirectional blood flow uh, also the respiratory movements uh, increasing intra-abdominal pressure will cause pressure on the veins that they have the blood has no way to pass uh, uh, but to the heart because of the presence of valves in the veins so you can see that morphology is related to function like in the large elastic or conducting arteries these um, multiple elastic uh, uh, laminae um, they will make sure that during diastole there is a, a continuous flow of blood in in the blood vessels uh, because during systole these uh, elastic fibers they will stretch and so during diastole they will recoil back and uh, they will create a pressure uh, in in the wall of the of the blood vessel that will uh, dampen the pulsatile flow of uh, blood you can see here um, this is a section in the aorta uh, don't confuse these uh, these are uh, these folds dark stained so uh, these are like artifacts uh, not related to any structure and uh, the endothelium as everywhere in the cardiovascular system the endothelium the lining epithelium will provide a smooth lining 
to facilitate the flow and prevent clotting of blood. This is um, another section showing here an artery. And again, why this is an artery? Because uh, the profile, the section is, is not deformed like in the vein. I can see an internal elastic lamina and I can see that there is an external elastic lamina and there is a thick layer of th thick multiple layers, thick tunica media, multiple layers of smooth muscle uh, fibers, and there is a tunica adventitia. This means that the lumen, uh, because of the thick tunica media uh, with smooth muscle fibers, the lumen is controllable in size, as I mentioned, and these are called distributing arteries because they direct the blood flow as I mentioned in the example of directing blood flow from the GI to the, uh, to, the, to the heart and to the skeletal muscle fibers at the times of fight or flight. And the elastic tissue will limit the distension of the lumen. Here, this is the vein. I can see that it has a distorted shape. The thickness of the wall is thin in comparison to the size of the lumen. Um, the valves uh, are not shown, but as I mentioned, the, uh, it, you might see sometimes you might see the valves, which are functionally important to prevent backflow of blood. Um, elastic fibers are not that much needed, so you can see some elastic fibers, but not in the form of an internal and external uh, elastic uh, lamina. This is to show you the wall of the heart, which is mainly a myocardium. And these are cardiac muscle fibers. Cardiac muscle fibers, although they are involuntary, but they are striated. So if you magnify more, you can see the evidence of striation. Uh, in addition to that, the cardiac muscle fibers, unlike the skeletal muscle fibers, which are also striated, but unlike them, the cardiac muscle fibers, they have centrally located nucleus, sometimes two nuclei, but usually a single nucleus per cardiac muscle fiber. Unlike the skeletal muscle fiber, they will have the skeletal muscle fibers, they have multiple nuclei, and the nuclei are located at the periphery, not centrally located like in the uh, heart muscle. And also, the, the, these muscle fibers are branched. They are uh, uh, not purely cylindrical, they have branches. And so these are features of cardiac muscle fiber. But the, uh, the other striking feature that you can see here is the presence of these vertical junctions or dark stained areas. Uh, these are called the intercalated discs because they are present in between cardiac muscle fibers and they look dark because the cell membrane here has uh, junctional complexes. So junctions between cells, mainly the junctional complexes are in the form of gap junctions that allow communication between the cardiac muscle fibers communication in terms of like ex um, movement of electrolytes during contraction so that's why that's how these um, muscle fibers they act like a network or what you call syncytium because they can communicate with each other through the gap junctions but it's not only gap junctions that are present in these intercalated discs but also there are desmosomes these desmosomes that will uh, prevent separation between the cells because these cells are contracting so they m tend to separate and so the desmosomes will uh, keep them together so the intercalated discs are a, a unique feature that is present uh, in cardiac um, cardiac muscle uh, fibers in the wall of the heart the wall of the heart is formed of uh, three parts it's formed of endocardium then myocardium and then we have the epicardium. It's like um, the tunica intima, tunica media, and tunica adventitia, uh, but with uh, slight changes here, slight modifications. So the my endocardium, we have endothelial cells, so clearly shown here, uh, simple squamous epithelial cells, endothelial cells. And there is a subendothelial connective tissue. You can see the uh, connective tissue collagen fibers. There are These nuclei are of fibroblasts, nuclei and then the myocardium is obvious here and you can see that in the endocardium um, there are these cells in some places of the endocardium you can see these cells these are the Purkinje fibers 
part of the conducting system of the heart. They are modified cardiac muscle fibers, and that's why they look like, in one way or another, they look like cardiac muscle. They are cylindrical. Uh, they have a centrally located nucleus. Um, but the cytoplasm, although it looks striated, but it is looks almost empty, and especially around the especially around the nucleus because they have less contractile elements. They are not uh, structured. They are not made for contraction. They are made for conduction. They also have intercalated discs. So these are the Purkinje fibers. They are also, they are present in the subendothelial connective tissue of the endocardium, not in the myocardium, but in the uh, endocardium. Purkinje fibers. Again, same features like um, the myocardial uh, cells, but uh, as I said, that uh, they uh, like they have intercalated discs, uh, but they have uh, they have large amount of glycogen uh, and less amount of contractile elements, so they uh, look as if they are empty, lighter stained cytoplasm. So to wrap up, um, there are three layers in the wall of a blood most of the blood vessels um, the arteries the veins the arterioles tunica intima tunica media and tunica adventitia and um, uh, why do i say most of the blood vessels because we have the capillaries they only have the tunica intima you can see this is an example of a capillary it should be also smaller than this maybe this one is also a capillary it's only formed of li a lining of um, endothelial cells lying on a basement membrane and the reason for that are the capillaries are for exchange between the blood and the uh, interstitial uh, interstitial fluids thank you very much